Hello everyone, this is Roxanne, and I'm going to do a video blog today with questions that you asked. So, I'm going to read people's names and their question, and um, I'm afraid I can't pronounce your last name, I'm just going to murderate it, so I'm just going to do the first one. Okay, so, uh, first, from Christopher, who was your toughest opponent? And if you could fight anyone, who would it be and why? Well, there's different kinds of tough, um, mentally tough or physically tough, things like that, but I would say physically tough, Marluz Kunin. Um, the first time we fought, she was so strong. When she got me in a clinch and she pushed me against the cage, my feet left the ground. And I thought that was pretty amazing. So I would say she was my physically toughest fight. And if I can fight anyone, I would like to get a rematch against everyone who I lost to. I need to avenge myself. If I want to become the strongest fighter in the world, I gotta make those up. So. And let's see, uh, Nick, well, what's your favorite post-fight meal? Chocolate milkshake. Uh, from Nate Lopez, what's the funny, uh, funnest thing to do in Japan and the best arcade in Tokyo? Well, the funnest thing to do in Japan for me is, hmm, good question. I guess go see interesting shrines and historical sites, and the funnest thing that's my thing, the best arcade, I think would be the arcade near my office. There are, oh yeah, the, um, oh, what's it called? The warehouse? I forgot, but it's near my office, and it has, like, three DDR machines, a few different floors, and it's like a theme park. So it looks like this Chinese factory. It's friggin' awesome. So that's awesome. So let's see. From Nick? Uh, let's see. Talk about life. Life like a box of gummy bears. Each one is a different color, tastes different, looks different, but in the end, they're all going to the same place. Okay, next question from Tracy. Uh, just what is it like living in Japan as a fighter? Do you have culture shock or lack thereof? Um, I'm not really living... So, mm, I'm kind of living half of a fighter lifestyle. I'm living the lifestyle of an English teacher slash fighter, so, um, meaning I have money, because I have a job, <laughs> so, yeah, it's hard doing both, though, it's certainly, you know, I could use the day off, Let's see. Uh, not really culture shock, just more accepting of the Japanese culture, it's not such a shock anymore, I've been here for about six years now, from Brandon, dragons, it was liked, dragons, well, I have this um, Dragonlance book. I haven't read it yet. I actually have a lot of books that I haven't read. Um, since I got this iPhone, I kind of stopped reading, which is bad. I'm still like in the middle of the Wheel of Time series. Um, from Dihiraz Adhikari. Sorry about that. Uh, how do you manage both fighting and teaching together? Because I love both of them. So, it's... I just... I love teaching and I love fighting, so... I just put my heart and soul into it and do my best. It's really hard, but I love it, so that's how I do it. From Slade, uh, how long do you plan on being over here in the States, and do you plan on going back to afterwards, or are you going to see your family? I don't have time. I'm basically arriving, next day weigh-ins, next day fight, next day leaving. So I have a job, can't wait, so wish I could see my family, but hopefully I'll go back for Christmas. Will you be bringing any Happy Warrior fans for the Happy Warrior fans? Yes! I shall. Let's see. Uh, from Michael, uh, would you fight a bear? LOL. No, I would not. From Stephanie, talk about random things. Well, I have a big-ass pencil, and I have a cute Care Bear towel. I think that's kind of random. Let's see. From Alfonso, what were the difficulties of transition from life in America to life in Asia? Mm, well, transition-wise, I had experienced living in Japan as an exchange student, so um, it wasn't such a big shock. Well, back then it was kind of a shock, but um, now it's pretty much, like I said, just accepting the way things are done here and just say, like, okay, it's Japan, I just got to deal with it. Um, hmm. Stuart David, 
uh, talk about Minua Man, the guy who wears a red speedo and dresses kind of like the anime character Kim Mikuman. And I googled him. Uh, at five foot nine, he's notable for taking fights with much larger opponents and successfully defe defeating the majority of them. And he holds notable victories over fighters such as Gilbert, I can't pronounce his last name, uh, Phil Baroni, Hang Man Choi, Bob Sapp, Eric uh, Butterbean, can't pronounce his last name either, Kimo, and K1 fighters like um, Errol Zimmerman, things like that. So, hmm, maybe I should make this video into two parts. It's getting kind of long. See you in part two.